Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, WWE takes action as Mickey James receives a trash bag containing her belongings in the post. I'm going to tell you who WWE is blaming for this and who's been fired. Going to tell you everything you need to know from WWE's latest set of financial results. And yes, they are still rich. <laughs> and the real reason some of your favourite superstars haven't been on Raw or SmackDown recently. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Right, let's kick things off by talking about Mickey James. This is mental. This is crazy. Yesterday, Mickey James, who was released by WWE last week, hits Twitter to reveal, essentially, that she'd been sent her belongings, I guess things that were left over on various WWE premises, uh, to her in the post in a trash bag, in a black bin liner with the name Mickey attached on a little tag. Uh, she said, thank you very much for the care package, WWE and Vince McMahon. <laughs> what, what was going through the head oh of the person days. who sent that through? I mean, you've just released someone and now you're sending them their belongings in a literal trash bag. The optics of that are obviously horrendous. I don't need to explain why that is a bad, bad visual and a bad thing to do. Um, now, WWE acted upon this. Obviously, when Mickey tweeted this, everyone was like, what the hell have you done? Why? What's going on here, you weird people? Uh, WWE have dived into this. They've taken action. Triple H! come into the forefront, tweeting the following. Upon learning of the disrespectful treatment of some of our recently released talent received on behalf of the company, we took immediate action. The person responsible for this inconsiderate action has been fired and is no longer with WWE. Now, in waited Stephanie McMahon shortly after, saying, Mickey James, I'm embarrassed you or anyone else would be treated this way. I apologize personally and on behalf of WWE, the person responsible is no longer with our company. Now, Mickey's original tweet drew responses from a bunch of different people across the wrestling world. CM Punk, he was in there. Hey. Uh, of course he was. Uh, but Jillian Hall chimed in and said, apparently I blamed the wrong person for my trash bag of ring gear over 10 years ago. She's not with the company anymore. So... Sending people trash bags full of stuff is, this isn't the first time that has happened. Uh, and Adam Wilborn, uh, WWE may have pinpointed a suspect here. Yes, uh, Mark Corono, former WWE senior director, has been released by the company. I should clarify here. Uh, he's being blamed by WWE. John Laurinaitis pointing the finger at Mark Corono as the person behind this idiotic move. Uh, no confirmation officially, of course, but like I say, he's being blamed by John Laurinaitis. Uh, and he's kind of a, a part of a, a big shake-up within WWE. Uh, Raj Geary reporting this. Dave Meltzer confirming it as well. Uh, Mike Johnson continued this report by announcing that Di Director of Talent Relations Nicole Zioli uh, has been removed from uh, her role. John Cone, the referee, has been removed from his role uh, in the sort of talent relations department. He remains as a ref referee. Uh, VP of Communications Mead Rust uh, has gone <laughs> and Manager of Publicity <laughs> and Corporate Communications Joe Villa also gone from WWE and uh, Dan Engler, according to Fightful Selectors, also left talent relations. Uh, they were all taken out on Tuesday, Cohn, Zioli and Engler. So unrelated to this, but like I said, a part of a big shakeup. But yeah, it appears uh, that John Laurinaitis certainly is pointing the finger at Mark Carano for this. Honestly, I saw your tweet last night, Andy, and I genuinely couldn't believe <laughs> what I saw. Like, like you say, it was bad enough that they've released people, as we always say, midst of a global pandemic, blah, 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 record profits, et cetera, et cetera. But have, not even have a heart, actually. Yeah. Have a brain, have some bloody sense. Like, astonishing, this Andy. I just want to know what was going through this person's head when they decided that sending a, a trash bag with stuff in it was, was a suitable thing to do and that the optics weren't going to come back to bite them. So the way this unfolded last night was uh, Raj Giri Wrestling Inc. came through with the news that Mark Carano had been dismissed. Uh, and then, of course, from PW Insider, we got all the other names and Fightful Select coming through with the report stating that uh, John Laurinaitis had been phoning people up to apologise for the situation, blaming... Uh, Mark Carano out, outright on some of those calls. It's 
just a, a crazy, crazy thing from top to bottom. Mark Carano had been with WWE a long, long time. He had long been considered kind of like a fall guy, like a scapegoat. How often do you hear people leave WWE mm. and go, yeah, Vince McMahon liked me, but Mark Carano and John Laurinaitis, yeah. those guys were assholes. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. They, you know, if there's an issue between top level and talent level, those middlemen were the guys who would be blamed for it and they take the fall and everything else. Seems like Mark Carano now has taken one fall too many. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this is the end of WWE treating their, their released people like literal trash. I mean, the optics, like I said earlier, are just horrific from this whole thing. So it's a crazy story. How they managed to like find the worst in every situation. They had such goodwill after WrestleMania. That's already gone. And then this, like releasing people's bad enough. At least put the stuff in, I don't know, a cardboard box. It's yeah. a bare minimum, isn't it, Andy? I, I don't know. WWE, if you ask them what their favourite colour was, they'd probably say Hitler or something. So. <laughs> Gee whiz. Well, the Fightful report on this, the Fightful Select report on this as well, said that, you know, WWE sometimes just send the wrong items to people. Like, they send <laughs> stuff belonging to active talent and then they have to get it back. What a what a whole crazy mess this whole thing is. Good luck um, in your future endeavours, Mickey James, and make sure you stay hype. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Oh, oh. bloody hell. <laughs> What a, what a crazy thing indeed. Uh, financials. WWE financials came out yesterday. Uh, yeah, they're doing all right. They're doing all right. They're doing fine. Uh, they're not short of a few, Bob. The uh, water coolers can stay, guys. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're still putting food on the table is what we're saying. So uh, the, the biggest stories here are an increase in net income. Uh, up to 43.8 million for Q1 2021. This is up from uh, Q1 2020's number. Considerably, it's a big leap. Uh, previously, this was 24.1 million. Uh, this is partly down to the new Peacock deal. They got the first big upfront payments for that in Q1 of this year. Um, but, you know, there are things that have hit this, like the Saudi Arabian shows. There was one last year uh, in Q1. There isn't one this year, obviously. Live event re revenues are obviously down. Revenue actually declined. Uh, overall, from 291 million to 263.5 million. Oof. Again, you can attribute this to the decline in live events and, and Saudi Arabia and everything else. So, you know, it, it, it's no great disaster. They're still on course to make crazy <laughs> profits. WWE still reckon that by the end of the year, they're going to have an adjusted OIBDA or, or BDA, whatever, however the hell you want to say it, which is the company's preferred profit measuring metric. They expect that to fall somewhere between 270 and 305 million dollars. Last year's number of $286.2 million was, of course, a record profit. Um, so they conceivably expect to potentially break that record again this year. They're doing fine. They're on course. Uh, earnings per share sat at 51 cents per share, which is more than double projections. Uh, yeah, I mean, WWE still richer than God. There we go. <laughs> yeah, not really a lot to say on this. They didn't need to sack all the talent they have. They didn't need to sack all the talent last year. Congratulations, you capitalist bastards. Well done, I suppose. Uh, let's conclude by uh, talking about some of your favourite wrestlers and why they've been missing from WWE TV recently. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, it is because of the latest COVID-19 outbreak within WWE. That's why some of them have been missing since WrestleMania 37. And obviously not going to say, that's why this person hasn't or this person hasn't, because we don't know. <laughs> this is just a general excuse as to why some of your favourite people, Andy, probably haven't been on TV recently. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, yeah, bunch of different reports coming in from this over the past past few days in the past week or so. I think Fightful reported uh, that the Raw after WrestleMania was effectively almost like a skeleton crew because people had not been cleared to compete. Some people had been exhibiting symptoms of the virus currently ravaging the planet. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be the kind of thing that happens until we get to the end of this. Uh, and the end of this is fortunately in sight with the rapid rollout of vaccinations. Mm -hmm. The US is killing it at the moment. We're regards to this uh, I'm looking forward to a future where we don't have to report on these stories yeah exactly just a reminder that despite the fact we can now it's, it's certainly here in the UK go out and have drinks me and Andy went for a lovely drink uh, by the Tyne on Saturday but that doesn't mean that everything is sorted get vaccinated and in the interim wear a mask observe all the social distancing rules stay safe because we are so close to being there but examples like this show that we are not there just yet right let's move on to your twitter questions at what culture ww of course if you want to get in touch with this first question today comes from brother ike who says what up homies i'm kind of stealing this from our your questions answered podcast because <laughs> it came in too late yesterday between me and sidrick uh brother ike asks 
who are the faces and heels in the Ooh. What Culture office? Oh, man, I don't want to out the true heels of the office. So let's <laughs> let's jazz it up a little bit. Uh, Michael Sidgwick, you know, he's a heel on the streets, but a face in the sheets because yes. he, he, we love the, the, the great legend. Um, but he riles you up on Twitter, guys. Uh, so there you go. Uh, another heel would be the unknown character who we never found out who once left their toenail clippings strewn oh. around the office. Whoever you are, if you're watching this, you are gross. Baby faces. I mean, I like, I like literally everyone who works here, so it's an easy option. Uh, however, you know, a couple of people stand out. In particular, our wonderful editor today, Phil Chambers, he fixes everything. He makes everything work. If something doesn't work, we go, Phil! And if he yeah. wasn't here, we would be utterly screwed. And the second we go, is... We Phil, even if it's midnight on a live stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We did that the other week. If it's yeah. four in the morning and I can't turn my kettle on, I am phoning Phil Chambers. Yeah. Uh, the other one and I'm going to shout out Ben Roy Turner. And it's not just because these two people edit us all the time. It's because Ben Roy Turner is a boy popper par excellence. Uh, shout outs to the under Turner. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to say he's a, both a baby face and a heel. He's a kind of a tweener for me because, yeah, he pops as huge uh, and generally he's good. But the, the, he's got like the two faces of Ben Roy. The other one <laughs> is just a bloody nightmare on quizzes when I'm trying to host them. Uh, obviously, <laughs> yeah. Simon Miller, massive baby yeah. face. We wish we could get spend more time with him, uh, but he hates us. No, uh, but he's definitely in London. <laughs> and and uh, the, uh, Sidgwick, you know, I, I'll... I'll stand by him till the day I die. But uh, yeah, he's certainly a heel to certain WWE stands on Twitter. That's the way I'll position it. <laughs> Hamlet, obviously, massive baby face. And I'm going to give a nod to my two other fellow Adams, particularly the absolute peace that is Adam Nichols. Oh, God. How can you hate that man? Uh, right, second question today comes from Eddie Zamhari, who says, uh, if you can put two top single stars in a tag team, who would it be and why? Uh, Eddie's is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, so Kevin Owens can win the tag titles and become a Grand Slam champion. Paul Burchill, because he is a pirate, and Hook, because he's named after yes! a pirate. They can ride wow. a galleon. They can ride a galleon to the ring. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Uh, pirate gimmicks 2021, we're bringing them back, and these are the guys we're going with. I mean, I don't think I can top that. All I was thinking <laughs> of was putting two former champ singles champions together into a tag team, because, you know, generally WWE likes doing that sort of thing, and they're generally unstoppable. So I'd have Brock Lesnar and former Cruiserweight champion Hornswoggle, because, wow. Well, that's a tag team I'd love to see. My word. Uh, right, final question today comes from Matt Reigns, who says, Happy Friday, Legends. Happy Legend. Friday to you too, Matt. Uh, everybody loves a good Mount Rushmore list, so I thought I'd ask you two gents, who is on your Mount Rushmore of promos? I would assume start with the rock and work around that. Have a great weekend, guys. Cheers. Tough one, Nick, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. Like, because uh, promos are... I love a good promo as much as I love a good match, so I could literally name about 40 people for this. Um, I'll go Ric Flair, Jake yeah. the Snake Roberts, Dusty nice. Rhodes, and I'll go for a personal choice. I like having like a, an X Factor at the end of these lists. Eddie Kingston. There we go. Oh, yes. Yes, I completely agree with that. I was going to have Jericho on mine until his song on Dynamite <laughs> on Wednesday. Oh, God. I yeah. pushed his head in the t toilet and... Uh, Flush it down. S swirly. Game of swirly, everyone. Game of Swirly, all right? Just shout <laughs> Swirly, please. Uh, Rock, Austin, uh, Scott Steiner, and Jeff Farmer. Scott That's Steiner and Jeff Farmer. <laughs> no, I'll yep. take, take one of them off and, and put MJF in because... He's, he's going to be on there, let's be yeah, honest, yeah, if he's yeah. on there already. Uh, right, let's Time move out. on to today's and finally. And uh, just just uh, once again, a massive thank you to the guys. It's the end of our week of celebrating 2 million subscribers. So thanks so much to you guys for helping us achieve that ridiculous uh, milestone. Today, we've got our favourite on-camera moments. Uh, that is going to be out, I think, around 5 o'clock today, UK time on the channel. And make sure you join us tomorrow because we've got a very, very special, bloody good What Culture quiz. But yeah, once again, Andy, thanks to everyone, because two million's insane, isn't it? Love you all. Thank you all. Uh, appreciate you all. There we go. 
God bless you, God bless me, and God bless United States. Uh, right, uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. For daily wrestling podcasts, got the SmackDown preview later. And of course, Wrestle Culture, complete with a hashtag bloody good quiz. Uh, plus, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch well, there, follow by the You can follow Andy Murray at. At Andy H. Murray. The H today stands for Hey. Don't send people black bin bags in the post. Yeah. It's really easy. And I also say happy birthday to John Cena. Happy birthday to his twin, John Oliver, who understandably is a particular favourite of mine. And a man I always get confused with, John Cena. What culture's very on you and Patterson? Happy birthday, you and uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> God wish you an happy birthday at you and ruins things on Twitter. Well, thanks, Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. Oh, wait. We'll see you soon.